Hi, AT from CNC at Home. I want to do some work with Lightburn today and talk about the print and cut feature. There's a few things that it allows you to do, but basically it allows you to burn part of something and then readjust where your laser is, readjust the material, then continue burning. It comes in handy if you're using a laser with a smaller burn area or you're burning on material that's much, much larger than your laser's working area. It allows you to burn your working area, stop, move your material, and then continue burning on another part of the material. And that's how I'm going to demonstrate this. What I want to do is dealing with a small laser. My Atom Stack uh, P7 only has a 200 millimeter square working area, which is okay for many things like doing a coaster, it's plenty big, but that's just shy of eight inches. If I wanted to cut something just on a random, you know, standard eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, you know, or you know, something like that, or if I wanted to go even bigger, then I need to be able to burn one section of it, move the material, burn another section, and make sure that they're aligned with each other. I was going to do my demonstration with the Atom Stack, but it turns out that I'm unable to do that because I'm minus a tool that I need. Let's take a quick look at the laser and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, I wanna talk about the P7 real quickly. When doing the print and cut, what you're doing is you're aligning the laser beam dot with a registration mark that you have on, on your material. Um, if for instance, where these two lines cross, if that was our registration mark, I need to get my dot, my laser dot, centered right up on that. And here's the problem that I run into. With the laser focused, okay, so the laser focused is using my focusing template right there. Now I can't see underneath here. There's not enough room. Okay, not a big deal. I can remove this protective piece of, of glass that then would allow me to see very clearly the laser dot. The issue is to remove this piece of glass, there's a little set screw over here on the side. I just remove this real quickly. We can see that. So right here, there's a little set screw in there. Turns out I don't have an Allen wrench that's the right size. I thought I did, um, but I, I stuck my smallest Allen wrench down in here and it wouldn't engage. So it's a little bit too big. So I'm unable to back that set screw out, which means I cannot remove this protective shield, which means I cannot see the laser dot where it's actually located when this is, is down in position. Again, it is so low. And, and that's a nice safety feature. And when this is focused, you're not gonna get a bunch of that laser light scattering out from here. You can kind of see through this window a little bit, but the laser dot is what you can see. You can't see your material a lot of times. It's just, it doesn't really let enough light through to do that. So removing it would be the solution. I'm unable to. Because of that, I cannot do this demonstration for you using the P7 like I wanted to, which is really where I would like to use this because of its small travel. You know, it travels from there to there. And so it's 200 millimeters square. So it doesn't have a lot of travel. So we'll go ahead and remove this and we'll use the LC50 Plus. Even though we don't need to use it for this, this kind of thing, because it has plenty, plenty of room here because it's 500 centimeters by 400, not centimeters, 500 millimeters by 400 millimeters. Uh, working area and so it has a much bigger working area and the things that I do are fine. If I wanted to burn let's say an image onto a large sheet of plywood or MDF or some other thing that was larger than this I can physically take this laser and set it on the material line it up where I need to do a burn and if I've done the registration mark thing that we're going to talk about the print and cut I can then physically pick the laser up move it to another area, get it aligned using print and cut and continue burning a much larger area. So that is possible with even with this bigger laser. So any, that being said, let's go ahead and get the Atom Stack taken out of here. You get the Genmitsu LC50 Plus set up and talk about the 
uh, feature for doing the print and cut within Lightburn. Okay, because of that um, issue with the atom stack where I'm unable to remove that protective glass uh, and we can't really see where the laser beam is focused, I'm going to go ahead and use the Genmitsu LC50+. Plus. That one has a flip-up guard so we can actually see the laser beam real easily. I can put it on a very low power setting and we'll be able to maneuver that laser so that it's lined up with our registration marks on the material. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let's go ahead and uh, do a little bit of work first in light burn, and then we'll go over to the laser and see how this print and cut feature works. Within the light burn, what I want to do is create something simple to demonstrate how this process works. So I'm going to start by making a circle and by holding the shift key and then making my circle, it becomes a, an actual circle. Without the shift key, it can be any kind of oval. So holding the shift key, I'll just make a circle. Then I'll come up to my size parameters and I'll just make that 100 millimeters. Now that I have that, let's go ahead and make a second one. So I'll right click, duplicate, and then we'll just move it over to the side some amount. It doesn't really matter for this case. I'll move it over. I do want them overlapping a little bit. So now I have these two circles. And the intent is to pretend that I am unable to cut both of these or this whole thing at the same time. So assuming that my laser travel was larger than this area. To do that, I want to split this into multiple pieces. And for my example, I'm going to break it into two pieces. So to start with, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on here. There we go. And what I want to do is I want to split it exactly where these arcs cross each other. So to do that, I'm going to go in and make a, a square or rectangle, and I'm going to put that on one of my construction layers. Now when I get close to where these intersect, the cursor changes to a circle with two lines through it essentially. That tells me that I'm going to click that point. So I'll go ahead and start my rectangle there, come down, make sure that I'm, I'm going bigger. It doesn't really matter how much past I go. And then now I have my rectangle. I do need this rectangle, however, to be taller. And so I should be able to just grab it and move it up. Again, doesn't matter how much. The important thing is I'm going right through these intersections. And you'll see why in a minute. Now that I have this rectangle, I'm going to cut these shapes. So I will first select each of these. And by pressing my shift key, I'll select the other one. Now I have both of those selected. And then the last thing I select is what I will cut to. So again, pressing the shift key, I will grab my construction layer rectangle. Then underneath tools, I can select cut shapes. So I'll go ahead and select that. By selecting that, you see that over on the left hand side, just this is, is kind of have the little ants crawling that they call it. So it's its own piece. If I come over to this side, this side is, is its own piece. I can even move it over so you can see that it's two separate pieces now. I want to leave them in the same spot. <clears throat> what I will do is take this one on the right and I'm going to assign that to a separate layer. And the only reason I'm doing that is, is for ease of us seeing that. We have black on one side, blue on the other. It'll also come in a little handier when it comes time to burn that in this particular example. Many times what the examples will show is that they will, they will basically save this just the one side. So they'll have, for instance, this blue layer, they'll have that deleted and then they'll save just this uh, left hand side as its, its own project. Then they'll undo the deleting of that 
and they'll do the opposite. They'll go ahead and get rid of the side on the left and keep the one on the right, save this as a separate project, which is fine. Um, we just don't need to do that for our particular example. <clears throat> what I want to do is create some registration marks. One of the methods for doing that is essentially creating a circle. Um, let's get zoomed in on that. Uh, so we, we've got our circle and then putting some, some lines in there. So putting, putting a, a line across. Oops, I do that the right way. <laughs> I always want to click and drag. I click without holding. There we go. And then we'll do another line up at the top. And you'll notice it does snap to some, some certain things. And it, the way that I did this, it was snapping to the center points on the, the edge. And so we have this going right through the middle of the circle. What many examples will show is they will put this registration mark something on the, somewhere on the burn so that it becomes part of the burn itself. So if I were to grab that and move it, they might set it up, you know, put one here, do another one down here. You do need two registration marks. For our example, I'm using, a, or going to use a different method and we're going to take advantage of the fact that we have a point right here at the end. If I turn off or one layer, we have a point right here where these two arcs come together. And I can use that as a center point for a circle. So again, using a construction layer, let me zoom out a little bit so we can kind of see what we're doing. I will go ahead, make a circle. And then I will align it. If I grab the center of the circle, when I come over here, when I get close to something that's a point, it'll snap to that. So now I have this circle snapped right to this center point, or the center point of the circle snapped right to the intersection here. And I can right click on it, duplicate, just get that down here, grab it, and get my second registration mark centered right where these two arcs intersect. The further apart you have your registration marks, the better. It makes any errors in doing our alignment less by having them further apart. Now that I have these two registration marks, I can go ahead and start setting up how we're going to do this burn. Let's uh, go ahead and get some material in the laser, get the camera over on that, and we'll kind of flip back and forth between what we're doing with the laser and what we're doing here in light burn. Let's go ahead and get the LC50 turned on. And then we will press and hold the home key and get that to zero itself down here in the lower left hand corner. All right, let's head over to light burn and uh, look at that print and cut feature. For this demonstration, I'm just going to use a, a plain piece of copier paper um, I don't particularly like working with white paper because it doesn't burn very well. It's too much reflection. It's inexpensive and uh, we'll be able to see what we're doing. So the first thing I want to do is get the laser moved over onto the material. So we'll just uh, get that sent here real quick. And for this particular demonstration, it doesn't matter exactly where we have it. And I'm going to flip up our safety guard because we need to see where that laser beam is. First thing we'll do though is focus. And okay, and I'm actually already focused right down on there. So I don't need to make any adjustment there. I will need to take our project and make sure that it's lined up with what we're doing. So I'm going to take the lower left hand corner and I'm going to move our project to where the laser currently is located.
This is not important for using the print and cut feature. It is important that we burn on the material, and this is just one way of doing that. Now, the first thing I want to do is just print out this black side. So again, let's get zoomed in here so we can see it. I want to print out the black side, so I'm going to turn off the blue layer. So I have my little registration circles and the black layer. The registration marks are on a construction layer, so those will not burn. What will burn is what's in black. We do a quick preview. It says it'll take about 11 seconds. Do I have the right parameters set? Maybe not. Let's go into the library. Make sure that I have that for cutting through. Yeah. Okay. We'll assign this cutting these cutting parameters to each of my layers. Okay. Now we'll take a preview again. It's still only 11 seconds, I guess I did have that set correctly. So this will be fairly quick. So let's go ahead and start the burn, and it'll just be burning one side. Very straightforward and simple. Now to show the power of the print and cut feature, I'm going to move my material. And this is to represent what might happen if I was doing something something bigger. Of course, the, I cut through, so this middle part's already coming out, so we'll just get it out of the way here real quick, if I can. There we go. So I've moved the material turned it a little bit sideways and now what I want to do is tell Lightburn where that is. So let's go over to Lightburn and see how to do that. First thing I'm going to do is turn my blue layer back on and turn the black layer off so that we just don't see that and use the print and cut feature. To do that we want to align our laser with the position of this lower registration mark. Let's go take a look at the laser while I do that. I'm just going to come up here and, and use my jog movement to do that. Okay, so over at the laser, I'm gonna go ahead and fire the beam. This is at a 20%, and then I'm going to move it over to approximately where our spot is. And when I get close, I'm gonna change the, the jog control off, and now I'll be moving, uh, my distance is set to half a millimeter. I'll be moving a half a millimeter at a time. And I want to get this lined up with that end point as close as I can. And that's going to require me to kind of go back and forth a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to have to come over and look at this. Okay, that's actually pretty close. It does need to come up a little bit and I think a half a millimeter is going to be too far. So I might need to change yeah, I need to change the movement parameters. I'm going to move a tenth of a millimeter now at a time. Yeah, let's bring that down a couple tenths and over a tenth. This is the tedious part of this, this process, but it's well worth it. I'm going to go ahead and st stop the laser beam, and I'm going to use the test feature on the LC50 Plus. Just fire the laser so I can see where that spot is where I want to be and where the laser dot is. Still not quite exactly. So I'm just going to go up and over, see if that's any better. That looks pretty good. Now that I have that spot exactly you know, where I want it, 
Let's go back into light burn and set that as our first spot. So I have my lower registration circle selected and under laser tools, print and cut, I want to set my first target position. And we see down here that that's turned into a, a thicker line. We have that set as our first position. This upper registration mark is where our second one's going to be. So let's go ahead, go back to the laser and move the laser head up to that second point. So we'll go ahead and jog the laser up here. And remember, I twisted that material a little bit so it's not squared like it was when we f did our first cut. Alright, so that's fairly close, but we need to go over to the left a little bit. I'm going to switch this back to half millimeter movements real quick. See if we can get close, and then we'll fine tune it. All right, I have to go over a lot still. Okay. Let's see how that looks. <clears throat> I suppose it would help if I moved the camera over to what we were working on. I can zoom in a little bit more. All right, so I need to come positive X and then down a little bit. So we'll move to the right and then down. That's really close. I'm going to fine tune that a little bit. I'm going to go back to moving a tenth of a millimeter at a time. Let's see, which direction do I need to go here? Looks like I need to go just a little bit to the right still. Okay, that looks really good. So that's right on the spot that we want. With the laser in position, back in light burn, your laser tools, we will set our second target position. Okay, so that second target position is set. Back under the print and cut options, we have two things that we can do here. We can align output to target. We can also align output to target no scaling. The no scaling is what I want to do because I need it to print to scale and I want to use these registration marks just for alignment. If, as an example, you were doing something and wanting to make it a little bit smaller or bigger, then you could actually just do the alignment and it would scale your output to the registration marks that you defined with the laser head position. So we'll go ahead and do the no scaling option. Then we'll notice over here in our laser settings we have print and cut unscaled. So those words popped up there lets us know that that's the mode we're in. Now I can go ahead and verify that I'm outputting just the blue layer, which is correct, that's what I need. I can go ahead and start my burn. I'll leave the safety guard up so we can watch that. I'll go ahead and start the burn and everything should be lined up. Let's move the uh, laser gantry out of the way so we can see what's going on here. I'm going to reposition the camera so that we get a better view of this straight on. Now we can see that this was our first cut and then our second cut lined up exactly where we needed it to here and here. And that's after I took the material, I moved it and I turned it. And that's what that print and cut feature will do for us. This is an example of if 
I again needed to print or cut on something larger than my working area this is a great way to do that so hopefully this all made sense it's a really cool feature and when used properly it works super well I hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up if you like the content of our channel think about subscribing Hopefully we can do more tips and hints like this with Lightburn. They seem to be popular. I enjoy working with Lightburn as well. Enjoy doing your CNC at home projects. Oops. <laughs>